Stu here from Music Technology and in one of my latest videos about the adjustable sawtooth generator I used this piece of simulation software here called Volstad. So I thought what we'd do today is we just take a look at this and how you draw and simulate circuits in it because I'm going to use it in the future and you might want to have a play with it yourself. There's some things that can be slightly frustrating about this applet when you first start to use it but hopefully if I walk you through it you'll find it a lot easier to use and you'll learn some of the shortcuts to make emulating audio circuits more efficient. Now we're not going to look at the circuit today, this is just the circuit you see and gives us some ideas of the capabilities of this JavaScript applet which was ported from Paul Falstad's original Java applet. We're going to start with a blank circuit, so we're going to go up here and go to circuits and then you'll see there's loads and loads of examples of all sorts in here and it's well worth having a look at some of these. But today we're not going to do that, I'm going to start with blank circuit. So we've just got an empty page like this. The first thing I'm going to draw is a battery, which is a two terminal voltage source basically. And I'm going to go to the draw menu to do that, top left hand side. And you'll see before I do that, that a wire has the letter W next to it and a resistor R. And these are the shortcut keys for these things. Um, and they're pretty obvious if you think wire, W, resistor R, capacitor is C, a polarized capacitor is capital C. But there's some less obvious ones. For example, uh, capital T is a transformer, not a transistor. And that's because there's different types of transistors, NPN and PNP. You could probably guess what the shortcuts are now I've said that, N and P. Now what we want is an input and a source, so let me go back there. Let's add a voltage source to terminal. We can see small v is a shortcut for that. And I'm going to draw it bottom to top because I know that will put the batteries anode and cathode this way around, just from experience. Now at the moment, it doesn't know which side of the battery is going to act or be connected to ground. So we need to add a ground to our circuit. And it's good practice anyway, because we need one for our audio elements of our circuit, the small signal elements. Now you can probably guess what the shortcut for ground is. It's G. And I'm just going to hover over that node and connect it to the battery. Now, if this wasn't connected to the battery, it would be red here. I'm going to show you that by pressing spacebar. And this is probably the most used shortcut in Falstad. So see how I've got the crosshairs at the moment? It can be really frustrating when you first start using this software to get out of that and be able to click on things and move them. So at the moment, I'm still in ground drawing mode and I can draw loads of grounds. But how do I select all these grounds? See, I can't drag a box around them at the moment. That frustrated me when I started to learn this software. I'll we'll just press spacebar and see how it's gone back into an arrow. Now I can select all those and press delete or backspace to get rid of them. Now going back to what I was saying about if it's not connected to a node, it will be red. Let me just move this up. See there's two red dots here. It's telling me it's not connected together. There's a bad connection there. Now, at the bottom right hand corner in the black area still, you'll see that it says ground current or I equals zero amps, but it also says two bad connections. So that also gives us a clue as to what might not be working when we're trying to simulate things. So I'm just gonna connect that together and now you'll see that it doesn't say anything about bad connections anymore. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is draw a wire from this node in this direction. So I'm gonna press the shortcut W on my keyboard, draw this wire, and also up here, I don't need to press anything because I'm still in wire drawing mode. And I'll draw one up to there. And now I'm going to press R for resistor. I'm going to draw a resistor into there, and then I'm going to draw another one here. And you'll see that completes the circuit, and we can see the current flowing through the circuit represented by the yellow dots, and the voltage in the circuit, which is represented by how green it is in this case. As you can see, we've got voltage here, but here where we're connected to ground, there's less voltage, but there's still the same amount of current going around the circuit as you would suspect. I'm going to press spacebar because I know the default battery is 5 volts, and in a guitar circuit it's usually 9 volts that we want with uh, an older analogue circuit, which is 
what we're building at the moment. So if we double click that, we can change this voltage to nine volts. Now I'm doing this, of course, these values are all perfect in the simulation software. So this resistor is exactly the same as this resistor mathematically and algorithmically when it's calculating what's going on. In reality, the internal resistance of our battery will be slightly different from battery to battery. We'll have different tolerances for our resistors. So this might be 1.05 kilo ohms and this might be 1.08 kilo ohms, for example. So this is going to show you kind of a precise emulation. It's worth bearing that in mind when you're moving things from here onto the breadboard. That doesn't really affect us at audio frequencies. It would be much more important if you are making high frequency circuits for radio waves and things like that. But here it's just worth knowing that and bearing that in mind. So we've got a 1K voltage divider. It's dividing this voltage. How do we know this? Well, if you hover over any component in Falstad and look to the bottom right of the black area here, the drawing area, you'll see that it tells you about what's going on in that component. So I'm hovered over the battery. It's telling me there's 4.5 milliamps being drawn out of it. It has a voltage of nine volts, it has an internal resistance of two kilo ohms, and the power here is minus 40.5 milliwatts at the moment. So let's go over here to a resistor and you can see 4.5 milliamps as you suspect, but it says the voltage drop across it is 4.5 volts. The voltage potential from here to here is dropping 4.5 volts. So we suspect that this is zero volts. So this is also dropping 4.5 volts. So here at this point here, we're gonna have 4.5 volts and that little panel down there indeed tells us that's the case. Now you might not want to keep looking at that panel down there to see what's going on in the circuit. So what you can do is if you double click a wire, you can show the current and the voltage actually on the circuit in the wire. And this really helps accelerate your learning. I wish this existed when I started learning electronics. And I'll do the same thing down here. And then let's draw a wire here and we'll do the same thing with that wire. Show current and show voltage, 4.5 volts, zero amps, because 4.5 milliamps is going into this resistor, out of this resistor, into this resistor, and out of this resistor. So these currents have to add up. That's Kirchhoff's current law, basically. Um, and we haven't connected anything. There's no load across here. We could represent that with another resistor, and those resistors then would be in parallel and that would act as a current divider and would actually divide the current between this resistor and whatever resistor was in parallel. We'll look at that in a future video, the difference between voltage and current dividers. So we can manipulate the voltage here by changing these resistors to other values. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this one to 430k and you can begin to play spot the circuit at this point in time, if you know your guitar pedal circuits. And this one to 43K. So I've got a 10 to one ratio now, and we've got about 818.2 millivolts here now, which just so happens to be a decent voltage to turn on a transistor. And in this case, we've got positive nine volts up here. So we're gonna use an NPN transistor if I say NPN again, you can probably guess what the shortcut is for adding an NPN transistor in Falstad. It is indeed N. I'm going to draw it this way around with the collector and emitter this side. Press spacebar and actually what I'll do is I'll bring this over here. I've got plenty of space to work with so we can just see what this value is. Now I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to put a wire in here, you probably won't do this, um, but I want to monitor the amount of current going into the collector and then coming out of the emitter. And the wire will allow me just to have a reading here and here rather than having to look down in the bottom right hand corner. Whilst I'm in wire drawing mode, let's draw a wire here. 
and here. And what we'll do now is we'll add a resistor here. And that resistor is going to be 390. And we're going to add a resistor here, which is going to be 10K. So it's up, that's 10K, 10,000 ohms. So I added those two little bits of wire here and here, and I did that on purpose so we could have a look at the current. So let's show the current and the voltage here. It's 5.8 volts, 321 microamps. And then let's show the current here and the voltage. And I'm expecting this to be millivolts, which it is, and 324 microamps. Now you might notice that 321.1 plus 3.2 equals 324.3 because 3.2 microamps is coming into the base of the transistor here and 321.1 microamps is coming into the collector here. So coming out of the emitter, we have to have the sum of those two. Let's have a look at what's going on down here. So we know it's zero volts because it's on this zero volt ground rail. And we can see we've got 324.3 microamps, which is indeed what's up here. So you can probably guess that the current here in this part, and that's because I've got a scroll wheel on my mouse and that sometimes pops up when I move it. And going back to what I was saying, you can probably guess that the current here is simply 340.4 minus 320.3 because this current and this current are entering this junction and the entirety of both those currents added together has to leave that junction. And we can indeed put in a little bit of wire and have a look if we want to. So W for wire, double click on that, show current and voltage. So naught volts, probably don't need to show the volts, but we can see that 16.1 plus 324.3 equals 340.4. They add up, that's Kirchhoff's current law I'm talking about. We could do the same thing up here. So the current, we know it's nine volts. And we could have a look. We know this is entering here. So the difference between these two is gonna be what's here. So let me put in a little bit of wire there as well. I'm just gonna duplicate that bit of wire actually. Because it's already set up. Now see, I haven't joined it together properly and it's telling me by putting those red dots in. That's really important. If you see those red dots in your circuit, it's because it's not joined together properly. Sometimes you have to move stuff out of the way to be able to join it up properly and do this type of thing. There you go. So I've got 19.3 microamps there. So we can also see that 19.3 microamps minus 3.2 microamps gives us 16.1 microamps. So entering this junction here is 19.3 and leaving it is 16.1 plus 3.2 microamps. Have you spotted the circuit yet is my next question. It's actually a linear power booster. Okay, so we've done what's called a DC analysis here in this circuit. So what we now need to do is introduce a small signal and see what it does to our guitar signal. Now, in order to do that, we want to block some of these DC voltages from getting onto our AC signal. So we're going to use a capacitor. I'm going to press small c and I'm just going to put one in here. And I'm going to change the value of that to 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. See, it's changed it to 100 nanofarads when I've typed that. And I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to take our output from the collector. Well, we've got this 5.8 volts. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the battery slightly over here. Remember to move my ground, otherwise it won't be connected. Uh, let's manipulate this wire so it's still connected. Now we're going to introduce a signal here and for most purposes we can just use the inputs and sources one terminal AC voltage source. You can use the two terminal one, just tie one of the terminals to ground. But it's often much easier just to use the one terminal one to quickly analyse a circuit. So I'm going to do that to show you what it looks like. And we just 
connected to that node. Now 40 hertz is way out of spec with the guitar. Guitars don't go that low, so I'm going to double click it and we're just going to manipulate it slightly. So let's pick say 512 and it definitely doesn't output 5 volts. Uh, in fact, 1 volt maybe with an active humbucker, but more like 200 millivolts, so small m. Um, and just so we're comfortable with what that means, I'm going to put in 0 0.2, which is the voltage, 0.2 volts, same as 200 millivolts, so the same thing. I'm going to OK that. Now, you can now see all of these currents and voltages are rapidly changing because I've introduced this small signal into the circuit. This is now oscillating. So now we probably want to use a different method of analysing this. Now there's two things we can do here. We can do this by eye if we want to, by slowing down the simulation speed in the top right hand corner. If I slow that right down, you can actually see it increasing the amount of current. If we look at the base of the transistor, for example, here, see that it's increasing in microamps and voltage. It's up to 880 millivolts now. And at some point, our input will swing the other way. There it goes, and it goes back down again. So we've got this swinging signal going up and down at the base of the transistor, and that is indeed affecting the rest of the circuit as well. Now, hopefully, this is an amplified version coming out of this capacitor of this signal. Now, in order to find out what's going on, we probably need to add an output. So let's add an analog output to this. So draw, outputs and labels, and analog output, which doesn't have a shortcut. And let's just put our output here. And we can see it here. And there's already a clue if you look at the V equals down in the bottom right hand corner of this space. It says V equals and it's getting up to maybe three, approaching four volts, five volts, six volts, seven volts, so eight volts now. It's slowing down a little bit, I think, 8.8 .8 volts. So it's getting pretty close to the battery voltage before it then drops away again. So I suspect that our signal has been amplified by the transistor in this circuit. OK, so what we're going to do now is have a look at what's going on. And the great thing about the simulation software is you can add an oscilloscope to it. So let's right click on our input source. And if you view a new scope, it puts it in the bottom of the screen like this. And I need to increase my simulation speed so we can actually look at this signal. There it is. And what I can do is then add my output signal to this and view in the existing scope, like so. And we can see it has actually massively amplified our signal. In fact, it's gone off the top of the screen here, so you can't see it. There is a slightly better way of doing it on this particular circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete this scope, remove scope, entirely. What I'm going to do now is right click on here and say view in undocked scope, which is down here, press spacebar to grab it. I'm just going to put it up here so we can see what's going on on the input, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Here's our input. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the output, view in new undocked scope, and then I'm going to make this bigger like this. Um, and then what I can do is if I go into the properties here, and I'm going to change it to AC coupled in this case, just so it shows it zeroed in the middle of the screen. And let's just for good practice, do it the same in here. So 1.25 volts per division. And what have we got here? 1.25 volts per division. But if you wanted to see this signal against this signal, like you can on uh, an actual oscilloscope, what we can do is we can also click on the input here and say add to existing scope and just add it to our scope here. Now we've got the input in red versus the output in green. Now you can see that's massively amplified there. It's gone from a maximum of 
200 millivolts, which is about 140 millivolts RMS, the average value, to 3.277 volts uh, with 2.7 volts RMS. So we've gone from roughly about 0.14 up to 2.7 roughly. So this is a great tool in analysing some of these circuits and beginning to understand transistor circuits and how they amplify signals. It's a great place to start, a really good place to analyse these circuits and you can see the direct result of applying these things and you can also unconnect things as well and go back and looking at it in other ways. So we could just unconnect our input here and we can look at the DC analysis again of our circuit and we can look at these microamps, the different voltages on each of these uh, wires and what's going on at the different junctions. And then we can apply our small signal again and see what the resultant output of our circuit is. I hope this has provided a good insight into what the circuit simulator Falstad is capable of in terms of audio circuits. I encourage you to experiment with it and the key to it is learning the shortcut, spacebar, W, R, etc. This is a fairly simple common emitter amplifier circuit here, but once we start adding multiple stages, it significantly speeds up your ability to draw and analyse these circuits. So it is worthwhile taking some time just to learn those shortcuts. Later on, we'll return to this circuit and we'll analyse it in more detail and then build it on the breadboard. And we'll see how this allows us to experiment with different values, which we can then change in reality and how that affects our audio signal, be it a bass, a guitar or a synthesizer. As always, my notes are linked below and I'll put this Falstad file there as well so you can upload this common emitter amplifier and play with it yourself within the software. If you like this video, hit like below and subscribe for more audio electronics content. I'm Stu for Music Technology. Happy experimenting and I'll catch you again soon.